newspaper files of the early West record many stories of famous and notorious characters of that period. Bill Doolin, the bank and train robber who terrorized the Southwest in the 1890s, led the most ruthless and efficient gang in outlaw history. Cimarron, Kansas, July the 28th, 1893. you haven't been with us long, so just stay here and hold the horse and keep us covered. All right, Bill. Red, you and Joe, follow me and cover me from that side. Come on, Blackjack. outlaw was identified as Ed Brinkley, a new recruit to the Doolin gang. Since a railroad was involved, I was sent to Cimarron on the double. I'm Matt Clark, railroad detective. Can't touch you now, Brinkley. Why won't you talk? Haven't you a family? Any friends? I, I got a wife. If you'll tell me where I can find Doolin, I give you my word of honor that your wife will get part of the reward. I'm... I'm gonna die, is that it? You're putting up a good fight. Doc here says he's doing everything he can for you. You you want the level about about sharing the reward? That's right. She's in Columbus, Ohio. This is Ed Brinkley. It's it's my real name. Now what about Doolin? He was heading for Oklahoma. A cave about forty miles north of Guthrie. I'd never been there, but I, I heard him talk about it. Can't you tell me anything else? No, I, I was kind of new. Tell Sarah I love her and I... I'm sorry. <coughs> Brinkley hadn't given me much to work on, but I sent a telegram to Deputy Marshal Gleason in Guthrie, Oklahoma, and left on the next train. I also arranged for Frankie Adams, another operator for the railroad, to meet me there. Yes, there are caves in that area. If I sent out enough men to handle the Doolin gang, they'd be spotted before they get anywhere near them. Doolin can't keep his men cooped up in a cave. They want to hit town, start blowing their money. I've checked every town on Crossroad within a radius of 50 miles. Anybody has seen them, they're too scared to tell us. Frankie and I have got a scheme that might be the answer. What is it? We didn't notify the newspapers that Brinkley had been identified. His wife comes into town looking for him. She might contact some member of the gang. Mm. Mrs. Brinkley willing to cooperate? Well, I don't know about that, but uh, Frankie is. I've been everything from a school teacher to a circus performer. Being Mrs. Ed Brinkley should be a cinch. Supposing one of the gang knows Brinkley's wife. Well, he hasn't been of the gang very long, and besides, she comes from Columbus, Ohio. Oh. Hmm. Oh, maybe you might turn up something with that. Fine. Frankie, we got to fake some identification paper for you to prove you're from Columbus. Let's go. Now, wait a minute. You know, Doolin has plenty of men. You got them trained like an army. If you do get a line on him, don't try anything on your own. We understand, Marshal. Then good luck to you, sir. In the next weeks, Frankie, posing as Ed Brinkley's wife, went from town to town seeking information about her missing husband. In the larger towns, I followed Frankie so I could keep an eye on her. In the smaller towns where a stranger would attract attention, I didn't contact her until after she made her inquiries. Then came the day Frankie arrived in Ingalls, an isolated off-the-pass settlement on the edge of Indian territory.
What can I do for you, ma'am? Or are you the manager? Yeah. Do you have a room? I might have. How long are you planning to stay? I don't know. I'm looking for my husband. Your husband? His name's Brinkley. Ed Brinkley. What makes you think he's around here? I was supposed to meet him in Guthrie, but he never showed up. So you're looking for him. Sign this. Brink's wife's over at the hotel asking for him. Asking for him? Yeah. And Gordon told her he was dead. Maybe she didn't get the letter. If she didn't, how'd she know to come here? Brink didn't know about this place. She said he was going to meet her in Guthrie. When he didn't show, she set out to hunt for him. By herself? Yeah. Uh, there's something fishy about this. He's in that letter, and I only told her he was dead, but if she came here right away, I'd give her Brinkley's share of the holdup money. Yeah. Doolin. <laughs> She's quite a gal. Yeah. Who is it? Got your suitcase, miss. Put it on the bed. He was right. You're quite a gal. You're awfully fresh. Get out of here. <laughs> sure. I uh, hear you're looking for Ed Brinkley. Wait a minute. That's right, he's my husband. Can you prove that? Well, I don't carry around a wedding certificate, but I... Is Ed in trouble again? First, I gotta know who you are. I'm Sarah Brinkley. Well, if you don't believe me, I've got papers and letters for Let's Ed. Let's see the letters. Just the postmarks. Southwest City, Missouri, May 16th. Bought no good checks. Ed's wife is from Columbus. You from Columbus? Yes. This coat looks store bought. Has it got a label? I think so. Peabody Emporium, Columbus, Ohio. When did you leave home? On the 18th. Ah. And that's why you didn't get my letter. What letter? Maybe you'd better sit down. Your husband's dead, Mrs. Brinkley. It was an accident. Who's crying? <laughs> sure. What's done is done. Tears won't bring it back. You're young. Good looking. You won't have any trouble hooking up with a man. And as long as you're here, I'm going to give you your husband's share of the last job. And you must be Bill Dillon. That's right. You can have a lot of fun with that money. If you don't mind, I... I don't want to talk about it right now. I'm... Sure. I'll come back later. Maybe we can have some dinner or something. By the way, it's a pretty rough town. Me and the boys took over. Make sure you won't be disturbed or leave a man downstairs. That won't be necessary. <laughs> you don't know this place. I don't want nobody bothering you. Except maybe me. 